Welcome to Screen Riot, the show where we let fate choose the movie we review. This week's movie is 2012's fantasy Dark Shadows. Obviously, this episode will contain major spoilers, so if you don't have it, you can rent it for $2.99 on iTunes, Google Play, and Vudu. You can also stream it if you have a subscription to Cinemax. Go check it out, and then come back to the podcast, because this is Screen Riot. Welcome back to another great episode of Screen Riot. If you're enjoying the show, go ahead and go to your favorite podcasting platform and like us and subscribe us and leave a comment, rate us, do all that stuff. Go to AmericanPodcasting.net, visit us there. We have merch, buy stuff, and our <laughs> Patreon. Go there. You can find it on the website. Do cool. It, do it now. Just want to get that out of the way. Okay, so this week's um, movie that we're going to be doing is 2012's Fantasy Dark Shadows. This was uh, picked by Kyle. Um, yeah, two in a row. Yeah, you had what two odds on that. First time that's happened. We'll have to see how often that happens. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of interesting. So, um, have you seen this movie before? And oh, yeah. Why yeah. have you chose it? So, the movie is uh, basically a remake of the uh, very serious drama TV sh- uh, show Dark Shadows. And it was in the 1960s, uh, early 70s. So it's about an imprisoned vampire, Barnabas Collins, that is set free and returns to his ancestral home, uh, where his dysfunctional descendants are in need of his protection. So yeah, but um, but I, I I really enjoyed this movie. I enjoyed it in theaters. I enjoyed it watching it. You know, yesterday. So <laughs> it, I I I like this movie. It's 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 comical. It's it's a good you know leave everything behind and and uh, you just know zone just out. It. Yeah, just zone out and watch it. Cool. Eh. <laughs> eh. Wow. Yeah, you 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 constantly cement just how different we are as movie watchers. Because because well, here's the which thing, which is fine. You I, pick, I tend to the, I tend to shut off my brain and yeah. just kind of watch the movie as is. You know, totally. You know, I don't go. No, that's not accurate. I and I. Man. So before John jumps on something, because I'm curious, he's got something to jump into here. I have a question for you. It's always my movies that you guys have problems. Well, because here's my question. <laughs> it's, this is a very simple one, I think. This What's is up? this is very simple, but it's crucial to understand before going into this movie. So you picked it for fantasy, mm-hmm. which is probably the only genre I think it actually fits into well. It's it's rated as comedy, fantasy, and horror, which makes almost no sense. I can see There's a little bit all- of horror in it, just because of the there was some, could be some scary parts in it for younger could be. age kids. I'm with you, younger age children. Yes, sure. There's Why also could be PG-13. some PG thirteen. There also could be some comedy in it for people with that don't maybe have humor. I get that they could you know they don't I laugh laughed. a lot. Yeah, wow. I, I did laugh a few times. Damn, I didn't. You are absolutely it, ripping this film. It, it also could so have fit, many funny parts in it. It also could fit into drama, which is probably more what it should fit into because it held so many of those those uh, pieces from when it was a soap opera in the 1960s and 70s that you end up in these long conversations between people, like for instance the hippie scene. Right, you end up in the hippie scene, and it just seems to go. That one did go. drag on for me too. Yeah, and go, and I'm like, I, it was it was on screen for probably three minutes. I'll be honest with you. Whenever my wife and I watched this one, in was it 12, 2012 when this came out? Yeah, yeah. We went to the theater and watched it, and she reminded me whenever we watched it the other day. She's <laughs> like, "Did we leave the theater at this point?" I'm like, "Yep, this is when we walked out of the theater. Whenever we were watching this movie, it takes a lot for me to walk out of a theater." Yeah, but I say me too. I don't think of it takes a lot because I I, I I give left. I give the movie the benefit of the doubt. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. I paid for the ticket, so I'm going to watch all all of it, so I actually can form a, a good opinion about it. I was that unhappy by that point in the film. The only time I've walked out. Was because we got to a movie late and it was actually La La Land and oh. we had to sit in the very first row and I hate that row. Yeah, and I'm like, and of course you know the very opening scene of that movie is just very very. It's almost it almost gave me motion sickness <laughs> just because of how close I was to the screen. I was looking <laughs> left and right just to follow the characters' uh, mm-hmm. vocal uh, or dialogue. What yeah. movie did we see in the theater, Justin? That we ended the up Dark being Knight. like, oh my gosh, that was like. I watched, well, talk about a vomit comet at yeah. that that close. I mean, we were in like what second row? Yeah, we were like yes, sec- I, first or second I row. Think I was in, there too. I remember watching it uh, really close at that, that time as well. I don't know. But, I mean, uh, it was the first time I saw the movie, and yeah. I remember like it. We were all the way to the left, and it, I remember having to like like hurt my neck to see the other side of the screen. I took the kids and saw Endgame in 3D 
right? Oof. Yeah. Oh. End game in 3D at 7 o'clock in the morning. Whoa. Yeah. And we were far left, exactly like you're talking about. It was literally like... I have never been to the right. theaters that early. For the audience that can't see it, I look like a hot dog. Podcast. I look like a hot dog. Like I was pointing, I was pointing directly, like just like, yep. And my neck, you're right. My neck was like pointed at this extreme angle. Yeah. And watching the character, what you just said about watching the characters go across the stream. Yeah. Imagine doing that in 3D. Oof. Like it was just a nightmare. I'm like, this is the worst. This this is almost as bad as watching Dark Shadows in 2012. Now I'll, I'll say uh, uh, w- one movie. I don't remember what movie it was that my wife and I went went to see. Un- unfortunately, I don't remember. Um, but it was my first time purchasing tickets online mm-hmm. with the the uh, assigned seating thing. Yeah. And I, of course, I'm I'm an idiot um, at times. And I did not see the giant thing that said "screen this way." Yeah. And so I accidentally purchased tickets uh, like in the second row. Yeah, yeah. But it was second row center, and it was one of the newer theaters where you could almost lean all the way back in the in the in the reclining position of the seat. Made it just and livable it was, enough. Oh, yeah, it was fine. Yeah. It's like okay, I I can do this. I can I see that. the. I'm back far enough. I can see the entire screen just by moving my eyes. So I'm good. Yeah. But but yeah, no, I I kick myself. I make sure now if I'm ordering tickets, like okay, the screen's there and I'm down here. Well, let's jump back into the dark shadows real quick. So in terms of kind of going through this movie, okay, the beginning. I want to be clear. The beginning part of this movie, up until I would say up until he comes into the 20th century, I'm I'm okay with more or less. Like the beginning narration part, etc. Okay, mm-hmm. M- more or less. I, I do always have a problem with Johnny Depp because I don't know where he's from. Like his his accent seems to be British in one sentence, and then sort of like you know New Yorker in a second sentence, and then he's obvious L.A. pretentious head up his ass in the the third sentence. I don't know where the hell this guy is actually from. So if you can't tell where he's from, he's actually a really good actor. Though. Oh, he's from all over the place in every sentence. It's it's just I don't know. It's a mess to me. He's actually born in Kentucky. Yeah, you tell me where that's at in his accent. Owensboro. Kentucky. Just watch him um, eating Gilbert Grape. That's in his accent. I can totally see Kentucky. That there. was thirty years ago. I'm talking about now. Like, I'm just saying. Like, accents do change when you live in certain climates. Not, or, not to, not to that extreme. He sounds, uh, he sounds like he's still playing the role of uh, Captain Jack Sparrow, sort of. It's, a, I don't know. It's all the time with him. Yeah. Anyway, when you made your bread and butter on pirates, then I guess so. <laughs> you're so, gonna talk pirate. about that. When he comes out, when he comes out in the 20th century, though, and like you're saying, though, the horror part, right, where he busts out of the the coffin and whatnot, and he kills and the kills uh, everybody. Yeah, kills the construction yeah. worker. I'm with you. I totally see the horror aspect there. The the, the three blinks of a horror movie in this in that piece. <laughs> um, the the problem I have with it is that it's a horror movie, quote unquote. But then it's you know him standing in the glow of the McDonald's sign, which is supposed <laughs> to be comedy, right? It right. was comedy. Apparently it is comical. Chuckle. Because in in the book that that his is uh, with the devil, yeah, on it, it actually looks like a McDonald's M. So it's like, okay, yeah. it looks like a McDonald's M. And yeah, then when, he, and then, when he, and then when he finds out, and then the McDonald's sign comes on, he's like, you know, the devil, you know, <laughs> yeah, this is Satan. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. I, I laugh. I did laugh at that because I noticed the M too, and I'm like, that looks an awful lot like the McDonald's yeah. M. I mm-hmm. don't know. It's, I, it's I, almost, I didn't laugh either. It's okay. almost like it's almost like the the very beginning, uh, like when he comes across that road. Yeah, and he's like, "What is this?" You know. Yeah, and it, it's almost like um, uh, not bewitched, um, hocus pocus. Yes. When they when oh, they were yeah, yeah. when they were walking and then they hit a road and they're like, "See, what is this?" It's like, "Oh, it's a road." No, so here's the thing. <laughs> exactly, I'm glad you brought up hocus pocus. So here's the thing. I completely agree with you. It's that fish out of water. Yeah. Uh, what's the other term for it? There's another one. Um, it's the, I always just say fish out of water. Man out yeah. of time. Man out of time. Yeah, type. Okay, it's, sure. it's that situation, right? And then Perfect. when he sees the eyes of Satan, but it was a car. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> that that, that briefly came laugh. out of my nose at that. <laughs> it was, a, it was a, <laughs> Fair enough. I yeah. actually did. I laughed at that one. Kyle. Thank you. No, Thank but, you. but here's the thing. So, so right um, off the bat, it's it's a funny movie. Uh, eh. Well, you know, uh, 15 minutes in. <laughs> Debatable. Because, <so, yeah. laughs> I mean, the credits don't start, the beginning credits don't start until 10 minutes into the film. Right. That's true. And an amazing aerial shot of Amtrak. <laughs> that, that was some cool aerial yeah. shows. Yeah. No, but so here's the thing. So I agree with you. Like you're, you're relating it to Hocus Pocus. That's a perfect example. Hocus Pocus is a kid's movie 
that's a comedy. Yeah. That's also got some serious. I mean, like there's three women trying to hunt down and kill children, and yet it doesn't cr- come across as a horror movie. Right. It doesn't come across as a drama. It comes across as an obvious family slash comedy movie. Yeah. This one didn't embrace being a comedy enough to feel like a comedy to me. That's Every, why I picked it as a fantasy. I'm with you. No, no. I'm <laughs> like I said. I'm glad you picked it as a fantasy because fantasy is one of the only thing it fits into. Sure. To me, which because is why I picked it. They didn't embrace that comedy piece, but because they didn't embrace it, it feels stunted. Like it feels like it. It's just. It's got this like. Um, oh, that was like a comic relief portion, but you know, it, but a lot of people comic enough. A lot of people that watch the show will actually disagree with you, and they the show, they'll, uh, yeah. they'll say they'll say that. Oh, I'm pissed off that they made this a comedy instead of a serious drama, as the, yeah. as the as the soap opera intended it to be. Yeah, you know, and they're and they're like they're very pissed off that they turned this into a comedy. Mm. And now you're saying that it's not a comedy; it's no, more no. of a serious drama. So I'm like, well, that's not what a lot of other people are saying. That's not 100 percent what I'm saying, though. What I'm saying is, I wish they'd picked the genre and stuck to it. Well, I mean, a, they lot of, a lot of movies have multiple types of dramas. You're in, right, or uh, genres in it, but they tend to lean on one of them. Sure. This, this one didn't do that. It had like I would it say had it leaned a, on fantasy more than anything. Because where in a town in the 21st century or 20th century do you have vampires and witches? No, I'm with you. It it's just fantasy. seems. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> go ahead, John. What'd you have? I uh, to to switch gears a little a, a little bit. Um, my biggest thing wasn't any of that mess that Eddie brought up, mm-hmm. but um, was that. I expect it, especially when you hear Tim Burton is, sure. is, is directing it. Um, and the beginning of the film is definitely quintessential Burton. Yeah. Right? That's Burton. Well, it kind of falls, a, starts to fall apart after that to me. It's like, okay, this is, it didn't feel, it didn't have the, 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 Classic feel of a Burton film. The, the weird ass shit that's, that constantly goes on in a Tim Burton film. Right, that right. That makes you go, was he on Well, the acid? weird architecture and the. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> well, see, yeah, this yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. Tim I Burton mean, world. I mean, I get they had to recreate, they couldn't find a town. The colors were definitely so, Tim Burton. So they. Yes, yeah, they yeah, were. yeah. Well, and, and even that was a bit off to, to me. Like, um, uh, hell, uh, Dr. Uh, yeah, Hell on the Bottom. Dr. Hoffman, right? Yeah, yeah Dr. Hoffman, yeah. yeah. Dr. Hoffman, her hair is like orange. Yeah, and it's I mean, like a very bright. It's very orange, bright, yeah. and everything else is like a, a gray and a black. And I'm like, what's the purpose here? What are we trying to highlight? Well, other than the fact that you love the lady because she's your wife. Well, the thing <laughs> the know? thing was is uh, throughout the the show or throughout the movie, she was actually taking his blood, and so her skin was getting more pale and like kind of bluish and dead because she was taking his blood. Mm-hmm. So her physical feature changes throughout the movie. Well, yeah. see the the scene that I was that that I that that made me write this note down mm-hmm. was when she first started taking the blood out of him. Yeah. So it wasn't even it wasn't even after she right. she started taking it. So I'm like cuz her her laboratory or for lack of a better term, yeah. um was very white and gray and very clean. Yeah. type looking and, and her almost, hair is just like almost out of place it it's almost like, had the same color as his blood that was coming out which is heavily oxygenated by the way mm-hmm. it wasn't yeah. just that it was like paint <laughs> it was so thick it looked like paint i was like oh that's cool like i've never seen blood that's oh, yeah. so thick that you can't wait it. was that was that the beginning quote of uh, blood is thicker than water oh yeah okay <laughs> Sure. Um, Maybe yeah, so vampires' bloods are thick. It's very thick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like paint. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Could the be. the bringing up Helena Bottom Carter for a second. The the caliber of character of uh, actors, I should say, that are in this, mm. pretty high. Sure. And none yeah, yeah. of them, to me, delivered a, a really good. I mean, Johnny Depp to me is not a great actor. Like, I think he's okay. I'm not. I, I, I agree hate, with that. I don't hate Johnny Depp, but I'm like, eh, he's the same guy. Yeah, I shouldn't say that. He's the same level of pretentious asshole in every single movie. So <laughs> yeah. that I'm willing to overlook to a certain extent. But Michelle Pfeiffer, Helena, Helena Bonham Carter, Eva Green, uh, Jackie Earl Haley, Johnny Lee Miller, Johnny Lee Miller in particular. I, like I like Johnny Lee Miller in a lot uh, of stuff. Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer. I named her. She yeah. was the first one. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of people in this that are pretty good actors that to me should have been better. And for some reason. It reminded me of Big Fish. Did you guys see Big Fish with Ewan McGregor? No. Yeah. yeah, I, I like Big it. Fish. Did you? See, yeah, I, I wasn't crazy about Big Fish. Big Fish either. It seemed very dramatized and like a toned down melodrama kind of way. I, I wasn't a bi- I wasn't a huge fan of it okay. either until 
I watched it a few years later. Okay. And we actually was actually pretty pretty recent that I that, that I rewatched it. And I'm like, okay, I I I understand it more yeah. now having lived longer. Mm-hmm. You know, in my in my own life, going okay, I I, I get this. This is kind of cool. Well, yeah, no, the the underlying story of it, I I get, and I I thought that was good that part, but I just meant the, I don't know. He Tim Burton has this weird way of like not connecting. Like he doesn't seem to want the out audience to actually connect to the characters. It's like he wants us to watch this this uh, story going by like we're like we're just watching a car passing. Like we're not going to be in the car per se. We're just watching just the cars as observers. Pass. Yeah, and that's kind of a weird. I don't know. It's a it's a weird way to feel as an audience member. Like, like for this story, had they done the 1960s, um, you know, Dark Shadows soap opera, you know, you're heavily involved in in these characters and done it as a drama. I really think that might have been interesting to but see. They Tim tried Burton. that in 1991 and failed miserably. I know, but it wasn't Tim Burton. Like, right. I just think Tim Burton doing it, it might have been really good. It might have been interesting. But instead, they kept sprinkling in, trying to sprinkle in this comedy horror aspect. And I'm like, it just doesn't seem, it seemed forced at best. Yeah, I, 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 I can hear that. Yeah, yeah I can so feel I mean, that. I don't know. That's the part that, it just bugged me. The, well, speaking about Pfeiffer, apparently yeah. she was a big fan of the um, the TV show. Mm-hmm. So when she I think heard. most of these people were. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> that's weird. Because yeah. yeah. they all kind of grew up with it. Yeah, I was gonna, well, I was going to say that when she heard that Tim Burton was attached to the project, she like went out of her way to get in touch with him to try to land a role mm-hmm. on it, like which apparently she doesn't do. Well, like, see, and, yeah, and, and the thing is, I, I almost think that was a detriment, like because you can tell, like um, when whenever you watch the the soap opera, like I went back and watched a couple episodes just to see. Michelle Pfeiffer wa- acts very much like the the woman who um, oh, really? Elizabeth Collins. Yeah, she it, she doesn't. She doesn't adopt so much of her that she is that person, but she adopts just enough that you're like, oh, okay, I can definitely see where, where that character shines through. But that doesn't make her – she doesn't own that character at that point. Right. You know what I mean? And She's just replicating her. Yeah, she's whatever. replicating. Yeah. And I think in some ways f- feels forced. I mean, when I watch her, I don't know. It just feels forced. I don't know. Eva Green was the same way. Eva Green, um, I, th- I tend to think of as being a really good actress. Like I liked her in Kingdom of Heaven. I liked her in Casino Royale. Like, I think she's a really good actress. When she was doing that whole getting shot shotgun scene or whatever, it reminded me of um, Death uh, Death Becomes Her with Meryl Streep. And I was kind like... Kind of reminded me of Terminator. Or a Terminator, way. yeah. She kept <laughs> yeah. getting all twisted up. It was up all and, robotic and everything. And it was. It just didn't look right. I'm like... Now, I will say the effect of her skin cracking and like her being made of porcelain, that was a cool effect. I was like, yeah. I like that. I like that effect. That's that's really cool. But um, But beyond that, I don't know. She just wasn't... She was playful. She was she was into Johnny Depp, but not into Johnny. Depp. It was fucking weird, man. It's just a weird, I don't know. It's a weird put together of, of different genres to me. I don't know. It doesn't. It feel. It feels very strange. It almost doesn't feel complete. Like like it should have been a, a, a series of movies. Didn't they set it up for a trilogy at the end? Yes, they did. Because yeah, they Helena Bonham 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 Carter opens her eyes at the end. Yeah, and that's never a good thing. <laughs> anytime, anytime, anytime a movie opens her eyes, it's no, a no, bad no. thing. Anytime no. a movie sets up to have a sequel, like sets it up, like from the first movie, like this is going to be a sequel guaranteed. It's never a good movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Golden compass is a great example. Golden compass is a great movie up until about three quarters of the way through. They start to set it up for, okay, well there's way too much happening right now in this war that's taking place in the golden compass movie. Way too much is happening for them to wrap it up in a two, two and a half hour, even three hour block in a way that's going to make sense. So they sort of kind of give you this really shitty climax. And then they then at the end, it's like, well, this is just the beginning of our journey. I'll see you tomorrow, father or some shit. And then it's like credits. And you're like, what? the? OK, so you instead of giving us a really good solid movie and preparing us to have a sequel, you gave us our shitty first movie. And now the movie's so not good. There's not going to be a sequel. You know what I mean? It's, it's just not there. And again, I think Dark Shadows had they not the ending part, but I'm just saying focused on doing delivering a solid first movie that always helps. Wait, do you know that for a fact that it was going to be? Well, why why else have her eyes pop at the? end? I mean, that just seems kind of Tim Burton ish, like make it ambiguous at the end of what's going on. I guess yeah. I don't. Know. I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't mean that, that that he's going to for sure do a sequel. Right. It's just eh, a little interesting a little pop at the end. Yeah. Well, I, and I fully expected her to. Come to back come out. back during the movie. I wanted her to. Yeah. I think it would have been excellent if she had fought, you know, um, what's her name? Victoria at the end or some shit. That would have been but, interesting, yeah. Yeah. Well, she wouldn't be fighting Victoria. She'd be fighting a 
Barnabas Collins. No, I'm with you, but it, but whenever um, Barnabas turns Victoria in the ocean, yeah. right, and they're standing there in the waves, right. had she leapt out of the waves or some shit and started <clears throat> fighting Victoria, I mean, <laughs> that would have been, like, started starting to fight Barnabas, but she knocks Barnabas down, and then Victoria jumps in as this newly, you know, minted vampire and, like, destroys yeah, her, like, rips yeah. her to shreds. Kills her for sure. And then end of scene, that would complete it for you? It wouldn't have completed it, but oh, I would okay. I would have been like, ooh, she, Victoria's kind of a badass at the end. <laughs> Speaking of, by the way. Victoria. So the same actress, Bella Heathcote, Heathcote, plays Victoria and Josette, right? Josette's the one that jumped off the cliff um, 200 years before. Right. Yes. right? Uh, her birthing hips. Yeah, but <laughs> but to be clear. See, the movie wasn't funny, though, John. <laughs> no, no. I, yeah, I, I know. That, I, chuckled, he, I chuckled he at birthing I know, hips. I know. No, but to be clear, too, um, where did Josette go? And why does Josette look like Bella? Or not Belle. Uh, yeah, uh, Victoria. Excuse me. Why does she look like Victoria? Is that ever I, dealt with? Well, I thought I Did, thought it was. Didn't Josette throw herself off the cliff? Yeah, yeah. but the the ghost Josette is hanging around the house every so often. No, See, no, no. She's not hanging around the house. She's hanging around Victoria. Yeah, you're right. She's hanging around Victoria. Where does she? We never see where she goes though. She just sort of disappears. Like at one point in the movie. She's been with Victoria the whole time, like ever since she was a child. I'm with you. I'm totally with you. What I'm saying is at one point in the movie, she just ceases to, like, for instance, the the boy, the little boy has his mom's ghost hanging out. Right. 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 We see his mom's ghost come back and defend him at the end. That's right. why right. she's been around because she's defending him the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, why was Vic- Josette hanging around Victoria the entire time? I'm to what to, end? To, to get her back. To get, remember when, um. Uh, Barnabas and Victoria are on the balcony mm-hmm. and she then they're having this real deep you know I, yeah I love you conversation yes. you know type thing and she says I, I, I've always felt drawn like like I feel like I'm home now she was so that was that was Josette Josette Josette's yeah. purpose was to get her back yes to but, uh collinswood but we still see soulmates. her that's kind of what I've right. totally yeah. with you but we still see her even past that so my point is, where, what was but her you, actual goal? Her to, goal was to actually find somebody for Barnabas to grow old with or to live with forever. Right. Because, I guess, because I guess, yeah. at the very end, when she was like, well, I'm going to make this ultimate sa- sacrifice, probably yeah. because Josette told her to. Yes. I mean, like, this is the only way that you're going to get an eternal life with him is to become a vampire. So what mm-hmm. you're saying, probably, probably that's what Josette told her. We needed a scene to tie that together. We I, needed a scene of Josette telling her that or, or whispering to her for a second. And then we see Victoria set out for the cliffs or something the same way we saw the little boy talking to the ghost. And then the, the boy turns around and goes, he's, she told me that, you know, she's out there by the cliffs. Like the whole reason why we see the mom a, so that he, she could save the, the boy, but the reason why she's, she's sticking around for a couple extra seconds is to tell the boy where Barnabas can save Victoria. But that doesn't happen with Josette who supposedly has hung out with her since she's a little girl. It's just little weird plot holes like that to me that I'm like, why did, why didn't they wrap that up better? Well, I didn't, I didn't really see it as a plot hole. I just, you know, it, it was just kind of like a thing on, well, they looked alike. Mm-hmm. So maybe this was an ancestor of this person. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking yeah. that the, the ghost of, of Josette was like, this is a soulmate and I'm going to leave my, I'm going to lead my ancestor yeah. to, so that they can be one together again no, and all that. Yeah. No, it's totally great. But is it actually supported in the movie? Right. Yeah. I don't know. But that's, that was just my interpretation of it. To- no, to- right. and I'm, I'm totally down with you. Like, that's the thing. I just, I don't like being the one who has to fill that in necessarily. You know what I mean? I like to be I able to point say, to something in the film. do that all the time where you just make your own conclusion. Yeah, I guess not necessarily with something that's that key. Because, I mean, otherwise, Victoria doesn't make any sense to be at Collinswood. I mean, it's a pretty pivotal piece as to why she looks like her, is following her, you know, direction. Well, the following direction, she's a haunting. She's been haunted since she was a little girl. Right. There's some shitty parenting in this movie, by the way, talking oh, about being haunted as a little girl. Yeah. She got sent to an insane asylum and was, you know, electroshocked. And then, uh, which you is know, a great scene because it was right when Alice Cooper was singing, uh, yeah, was it uh, that one? Be my Frankenstein? Or no, 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 it was it was the Ballad of Dwight Fry. And when uh, I like when Chloe uh, Moritz or yeah yes. Moritz comes in, and it's like, "Mommy, where's Daddy?" You know that that was a mm. pretty cool little slip in there into yeah. the movie. Yeah, uh, and it, you know what's kind of interesting about Alice Cooper since uh, I brought him up, uh, Johnny Depp is actually in a band called the Hollywood Vampires, mm-hmm. and okay. the Hollywood Vampires was a, a drinking club. 
formulated by Alice Cooper back in the early 70s. And this was actually in 1972, mm-hmm. you know, the movie. So I was thinking, this is kind of cool. <laughs> it's it's weird play of events on, okay, so say he did, say with this was real life, mm-hmm. right? And Alice Cooper played at Barnabas Collins' bash or big ball um, and then started a drinking club called the Hollywood Vampires. And Barnabas was a vampire. And then, you know, come to find out that it's like Johnny Depp was part of this this band now. You know, hmm. I have to say... I, it's just kind of neat how all of this kind of, you know, intertwines with each other. Well, and I'm going to say this. As much as you enjoyed this movie, I, I, I respect how much you enjoyed this movie. Let me say it that way. I don't... I, I, because I, I never want it to seem like I'm personally attacking you or something like that with these movies. Well, that's and the I'm, most part, but it's fine. I'm getting used to it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, I can tell you enjoyed it. And you, you, you like... It, it's interesting to me what movies you decide to be playful with. Okay? Let me say it that way. But, but like this one in particular, like when I saw Alice Cooper, I was like, okay, well, they got some aging rocker from the 1970s who would have played. And they stuck him in the movie. I didn't go and hunt down the, the Hollywood vampire story and all that. So that's no, cool. That was, that was just common knowledge that well, I had or, and, and my wife had. No, that's but cool. But that's just because I'm in that, in that area of music. Yeah. It's like I really like Alice Cooper. Yeah. Been to a, a concert of his. Yeah. A really good uh, stage actor. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So I'm glad, I'm, I'm, I can see why you enjoyed it more. Let me yeah. say it that way. And the music in this film is top notch too. I do like most of the yeah, music choices. Yes. Just because it's early 70s and that's when all the cool ass music music was played anyways. Yeah. I, the music I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed yeah. the music choices. But the a lot of the other decisions they made was, were strange to me. No. Yeah. I, I, I do, going back to the love story. Yeah. I do feel that the connection between Victoria and Barnabas could have been better. I agree. It, it could have been. It never was really fully realized. Yeah. You know, um, I know why she feels the connection to uh, Collinswood. I know why she feels the connection to him. Um, but what what confuses me is she's not in more of the movie. Yeah, because there's like random scenes where... I think Barnabas is down by the the ocean, and then she just appears, appears and yeah. he's yeah. like, "Oh, hey, you know, come walk with me." And yeah, and yeah. And, like, oh, okay. And you know. and th- there was actually a time where, because I'm like you, I when, whenever I watch a movie, I try to get lost in it, mm-hmm. um, especially when it's the first time that I've seen it. I right. try to I try to cut my 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 uh your film knowledge film out, knowledge out yeah. right and try and try to watch <laughs> I, just, I literally just go into a movie theater and i just crumble up everything i know about movies and i yeah. toss it out the window and I, I everything's a blank slate and sometimes i can't though and and that was one of the things that pulled me out of this out of this film was her missing from uh, from like like two-thirds of the film yeah because i was thinking there, there, there was a time where i hadn't seen her in a while and it actually took me out and they were they were um it was it was they, when they were fighting right when they when they when Barnabas and um Angelique, Angelique were were fighting you know and they, you had Michelle Pfeiffer coming in and oh, okay yeah Michelle like, Pfeiffer. It, it, like, all the characters yeah. were were in were in this 2 to 3 minutes 5 minute area except Victoria yeah well I'm Victoria like, was actually being summoned to the edge of the cliff. right but but we don't know that yet right but as, as the audience so but we, we we just don't know it so i've i've actually vocally said to my wife i said where's victoria yeah no oh, I, I, like, I see i didn't i didn't uh see the movie to me like it does a lot of those things where again when you're finished you can look at it like you just did and say oh well, that's why she wasn't in the scene because she right. was walking to a cliff but there seems to be a lot of assumption like the the relationship between to me they seem to be setting up Okay, he's gonna go after Victoria, and then Angelique comes back in the system, back in the the picture, and you know what? He's actually gonna fall for Angelique because they're the only ones who shared anything sexual. They're the only ones who shared. I mean, they uh, Victoria and him shared a kiss, but I mean, beyond that, they had a. To me, there was more chemistry between Angelique and uh, Johnny uh, Barnabas, I should say, mm-hmm. than there was between Victoria and Barnabas. There. It, it just didn't seem to be any real chemistry. There was sexual energy happening between Eva Green and Johnny Depp where there was none between this girl 
Well, I'm sorry, Bella Heathcote is she's very cute in a model kind of way, but she's not Eva Green. I hate well, to say it any other way, but no, that's that's very true. Yeah, yeah. But you know, back then, I guess you go to the to Birthing the modest, hips. yeah, the the modest <laughs> the modest type, uh, the modest women. You know, the 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 women that are quiet and shy, not the the whores and sluts and all that kind well, of stuff. When you say going back, this is 2012. Now, granted, no, it's no. made in 19. Going going back to the 16th century. Oh, the, the, you know, whenever gotcha. Barnabas was around, it's but like he was, everything was but, very structured. But it wasn't. He made he. Uh, made out with Angelique prior. Right. He was. Yeah. Well, he was. Yeah. He was but that. That's what you did back then. He was. A, he was a playboy. Yeah. But he, that's my point. You know, no, no. She remember she was the help. You could fool around with the help, but you don't marry the help. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Is the, that how you do it? That John? was the, okay. well, Not now. <laughs> not now. But back 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 in back in Barnabas's uh, heyday. Sorry, sorry I didn't learn the he, rules, buddy. Whenever he was actually a living person, <laughs> that that's that's what you did. You were expected to marry within your class. Totally understand. But since now he's in 1972, and he's those, still a man out of time. But though. hear me out. And those those rules. But he can learn. Those rules no longer apply. Now he could hook up with Angelique, and who's going to judge him? Nobody's around to judge. You know what? I can now be my own person, and I can will do whatever I want to well, do. As also, I go through every single he's language. He's also taking <laughs> modern day relationship advice from uh, Chloe Moritz. Yeah, who's from a, a werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, now speaking of that, okay, I have shitty. a major problem with this. Okay, how in the world? Now we, we we find out after after we find out she's a werewolf, mm-hmm. we find out that she was bit by a werewolf in her crib. Yeah, right. Which okay, we haven't heard about how at all. In the hell? Okay. Can so, we? Ha- okay, okay. Let me finish. Yep. How in the hell does Michelle Pfeiffer, this girl's mom, mm-hmm. not know for fifteen years that her child is a werewolf? Well, uh, was bitten. Okay, but it's just how kids keep things secrets from their parents, anyways. Three, four, five year olds, yeah, turning into werewolves. Not just gonna go right over the parents' head. Could be because I mean it, the family was dysfunctional. So, when I was mean, it? When was it mentioned earlier in the film that she was bit by a vampire in her crib? Was werewolf? Um, a, a, but, a werewolf. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. When was but, that mentioned? Okay, so the whole werewolf thing. There was a werewolf in the original Dark Shadows, but, totally it, was, get it. but it was a male that was in it. But it, I think they just tried to incorporate that. That was another thing that was. That was one of the things that kind of threw me out when she just randomly turned into a werewolf. I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, werewolf. Okay. Well, that's it's like, oh, yeah. okay. Well, yeah. Her, Wolf. Yeah. It's... Her her whole. I, I mean, yes. Granted, she was young in this in this movie. It was like one of her first movies. She was better in Kick Ass. Well, yeah. Well, she was awesome was, in Kick Ass. A few years after, but um, no, that was before. Was it before? Yeah, Kick Ass was like 2007. Really? Yeah, she oh, was I guess younger. So. Yeah, yeah, she, she was, was like younger, a little kid. She? Yeah. Well, maybe maybe she uh, her head grew or something like that. I think honestly, I think it's just director She's being a little bit more artistic. No, I think the director. I think the direction was just off. Maybe. Like I honestly think they 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 loved the the soap opera so much. They tried to keep all these elements. They should have abandoned a few more elements. Yeah, but there the whole werewolf things. thing that was a little strange to me, but. Looking back at the old show, there was a werewolf in that, so they probably just are like, uh, "Well, uh, let's just throw Chloe Moritz into a werewolf." Okay, cool. Yeah, works. Next. Yeah, I know. It's just it's just strange to me. Again, I wish, but you don't find out why she's a werewolf until after the fact, and then there's a story that's being told about, like, "Oh yeah, she was bit by a werewolf, werewolf in her crib." It's like, well, and that was that was coming from uh, Angelique, Angelique saying, yeah. "Oh well, yeah, I did this to that one." So it's like she she has always manipulated and cursed the family in different ways that and, I and then totally and towards, towards the very end you're starting to find out all the dirty laundry that that she did yeah you know no that part i totally get yeah. as far as how she's she's admitting to screwing over this family in different ways i just found it strange the same way you did that michelle pfeiffer her mom like if michelle pfeiffer was like you know our, our family has been plagued for years you know uh, my, my daughter was attacked when she was a little kid by you know some some dog that came out of the woods okay cool at least there's some sentence that tells us Hey, a dog attacked her coming out of the, coming out of the woods. Like what the hell? And I then just, later on, whenever she turns into a werewolf, you're like, oh, of course, because she fucking dog was a wolf and it was a werewolf. I so. just can't. Su- I I can't suspend my disbelief on on that the fact that that she's 15 years old and has never turned and has either never turned. Well, I mean, she obviously knew she was a werewolf. Yeah, so she's turned she's like before. I'm a werewolf. And, you know, bark. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she. Wolf. That mom. <laughs> Chris Mark. I was hoping you guys Kreutz, would. Kreutz Mark. You had you had you had two words: bark or wolf. It was wolf. It's, it's wolf. Damn. Yes. Okay. Wolf. There we go. Yeah. Um. 
I just have I have a real problem with with the mom not her mom not knowing that she was a werewolf. I agree with you. And let me say this: you said suspend disbelief, and you were talking about dumping all of your precon- preconceptions going into a um, into a film. I tend to do the same thing. If the movie bounces me out, and like this movie did, like as I'm as I'm watching it, I'm like, okay, well, I'm just not. I'm not involved in the movie at all. I'm a bystander and I'm such a bystander that I'm, I'm even able to think Jesus Christ. Like, why is this taking so why, why is there constant talking? And there's science, by the way, remind me, we're coming back to the science of this movie. It's fucking broken and I have a problem with it. (laughs) But anyway, um, if it bounces me out, it, it, you know, it, it takes me out of the film. I'm out of the film. And once I'm out of the film, then I start comparing it to other things and thinking about everything else. Like there's a movie that is not a great movie, but for some reason I enjoy den of thieves with um, Gerard Butler. It's not an amazing movie, but for some reason when I watch it, I just enjoy the movie. It's, it's, I don't ever get taken out of it to the point where I'm like, okay, um, I, well, wait a minute. Those two guys, they, they talked earlier. This doesn't make any sense. But I bet you I, if I, don't I end picked up it, it might have changed your mind. It has nothing to do with Pretty you, sure Kyle. Anyway. Nothing to do with you. Okay, so nobody noticed uh, Christopher Lee? Yeah, of course. The yeah. As the okay, fisherman. Yeah, yeah, but he was also Dracula yes. after Bela Lugosi. Oh, was he? Yeah, so no. he was also a vampire. So yeah. I thought, okay, this is nice. this is pretty interesting how everything is. I, I just like how movies bring in other aspects of other things that they're like, oh, well, he was also a vampire. You know, Alice Cooper, he has the Hollywood vampires. This movie is about a vampire. But I'm, str- I'm, I'm confused. Can you, so do you suspend thinking about all these other movies or do you actually think about them while you're watching the movie? Because you're you're saying that now, like, well, he well, was a vampire, and yeah, but it's it's they're just blips. They're like, oh, okay. well, he was he was a vampire. That's cool. Well, let's talk Next. about the science for a second. Okay, fine. So, so explain to me the sun, how the sun hurts Barnabas in this movie. Explain to me how the sun affects any vampire in any modern day movie. But it doesn't affect him consistently <laughs> the same way in this movie. Yeah, because he stands it, in front of the window and he starts combusting burning. into flames but yes. mean, uh, if he's in the shade he's fine five minutes earlier though he's walking on the beach yeah. with victoria it's overcast it's in, and he's and it's shady but the sun is lighting him he's lit his, but, his but it's not back- direct sun. well then there's the other during the montage yeah the 10 minute montage or whatever where they go to the canning facility at least that there's an umbrella he has an umbrella. yeah he has an umbrella i'm with him, at least there's an umbrella then still there's no, I know. Sun. At least that I can say there's an umbrella. But when they're walking on the beach, there's no umbrella. He's wearing a hat. He's wearing glasses. And they're walking on the beach. And the sun is, is behind them. It's on their backs. And he doesn't burst into flames at that point. There's just weird things like that that I'm like, I don't understand. The, the science of the movie is all over the place. Very it's very strange. Foggy. Very foggy. Very foggy. Yeah, with very no foggy. fog. It's I think clear it's fog. funny that you're calling vampire lore science. I think that's... <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> the science of the... It's, yeah, it's, it's like... We're it's talking like, about vampires here. It's like a global warming <laughs> the in- or something. The inaccurate folklore... Yeah, references. It's not the no, no. What I'm saying is the science of the movie. For instance, Blade, the first Blade. In the first Blade, they um, start wearing suntan lotion in the first right. Blade, and it allows them to not be burned. So anytime that they're out in the sun, after the point, once you realize, once they're, you're told that they're wearing suntan lotion, you're supposed to assume that they can't be hurt by the sun because they're wearing suntan lotion. You also have to think of the blood transfusions that are going on, as well. That's true. He's doing blood transfusions of a normal human. So maybe with the blood transfusions, now we ended up knowing that um, uh, Dr. Hoffman she was taking, was it, taking the blood her own instead in. of, and, well, she was putting her own in, but she was she was actually t- saving some for her, saving some of Barnabas's blood for her so to, you're saying to make because, her into a vampire. Okay, so you're saying because of the blood transfusions, he's allowed to walk in the sun. Okay, I could accept that. Yeah. I could accept that. No, but that's the reason... Right, I could take that. Yeah, because I mean, the the first thing was the first thing why, um, you know, he didn't want um, uh, Victoria, yeah, to know that he was a vampire. So yes. he was wanting to become human. Yes. So that way she, he could be out and during the day and all that kind of stuff. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So, so okay, so maybe it's the transfusions. Yeah. Okay, I can accept that. Okay. Again, if, if as long as that's, I didn't take it as that, and the. Myriad yeah, of times it, I've I seen this it was film. almost. I think it was almost right after the blood transfusion scene. That's when he was out in the. It might be a couple of minutes, but it, you're, yeah. it's close. All those, all well, those well, they scenes do a are, couple of transfusions. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Uh, it was. Yeah. It, it's all really smashed together right there because there's certain scenes that are super long, and then there's others that are smashed together. The hippie scene seems long for some reason. The I, end I, I didn't see that to be long though. He it was telling. He was telling a story of like his love 
mm-hmm. and affection towards Victoria. And I think that's why done I tuned in a out. Steve Miller band. Oh, that's, song. That's why you tuned out because you. Probably. Hate, you hate I, I, I'm on Kyle's side on, on this one. I didn't. I didn't feel it was was overly long. No, and and to see Gilly again from Game of Thrones, that was kind of cool. I didn't even notice it was her. I didn't either. Gilly. Yeah. yeah she no, was she was the one that was it. like, you know, the main, suspend, the main vocal one. Uh, I suspend all movies and things before. The, like, as soon as the opening okay, starts. So, <laughs> you are a liar. Man. Okay. <laughs> so, when dirt, certain actors pop up from from <laughs> movies that I've seen before, I go, oh, there was in this one. Cool. Okay. N- I, then it's off. <laughs> I open up a little door and it says, oh, hey, by see, the way, this person was in this movie. See, cool, open shut Open a little door. door and Gilly slips through. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> One scene I wish they, I wish they had in, in the film that they had included mm-hmm. was a scene of all of the fishermen mm-hmm. after Barnabas uh, spoke to um, Christopher Lee. Christopher yeah. Lee. Yeah. I wish there was a scene of all the fishermen in you know docking at their factory and yeah. unloading fish as opposed to Angelique still yeah right because it just doesn't her wanting to her getting ticked off that yeah she's ticked off at Barnabas you know because she just, that's what she is she because bitches she, be crazy exactly which is yeah which is which is be crazy which is be crazy that's the tagline of this <laughs> yeah which is which is be crazy so I I I didn't see the real threat of of that uh, facility reopening yeah. to her. Well, to that just, ex- I guess to, to the extent of $1.75 million. Well, I guess it's also, <laughs> it, it's, I guess it's insinuated that, you know, since there's a lot of fish coming into that facility, then you have boats that catch that fish. Right. I just wish I would have seen it. Yeah. it I mean, all- there were, there were a lot more, I guess there was a lot more boats passing by. I mean, yes, they are literally right across the, uh, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, not a channel, but like a dock or something like that. They're on opposite ends of the dock. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you see, you see boats all the time, but yeah, you don't really understand if yeah. those boats are for, uh, was it the Angel? Angel Heart. Or Angel, Bay. Angel, Angel Bay. Angel Bay. Yeah, yeah. Angel Bay, not Angel Heart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to see just a quick scene of, of, of a bunch of like, perhaps, um, uh, what, what's her name? The witch, uh, Angelique. Angelique. Yeah. Angelique, looking out her 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 window and seeing all the boats over there, and a bunch of guys are, are oh. offloading a boat. That, that's all. That's all I'm talking about. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just a small little thing going. Now I got to buy him out, because but obviously he's, he's ticking me off even more now. Yeah, to to add that plot into the movie would probably have been overkill. But See, it was I, there though. I well, not yeah. not not necessarily. The, the only reason why she was wanted to shut down his company is just because she wanted him. As you know, his her lover. That's the only reason she she care yeah. less about that company. I don't, I don't yeah, personally, I don't know. It, it, but the only thing that she has to balance with is her board. Her board is like uh, you know it's it adds a little bit of competition here and there, and she's like, no, the main reason why he's up is you know, or the main reason why I hate him mm-hmm. redoing all this is just because I hate him because he's you know sleeping around with Victoria or something. Instead of me, I okay. I it's I know, all personal. It's not anything to do with business. 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 Um, I agree with you. I will say though that John saying the insinuation thing that, or excuse me, you were saying it was insinuated. Yeah, that feels like half the movie at this point. Like there's so much that seems to be implied but doesn't get shown, and then the yeah. stuff that does get shown seems to be stretched out, sure. and it's just strange. Like. Like that, I agree with John. Like that seems like a simple thing to add in. They could have easily added that into the montage and been like, oh, okay, well, we're opening the canning thing. Here comes some boats and they're crossing over and he's shaking hands with Christopher Lee. End of montage. You know what I mean? Like as far as that piece goes. Well, the whole, yeah, the whole montage after the meeting of Crystal, Christopher Lee is renovating the whole. Yep. I'm just saying. Collins board. I'm yeah. saying tag two extra scenes onto the end of that, that, that address what John's talking about. But it seems yeah, like there's a lot, right. there's a lot that seems to be just implied. Cause in I mean, the movie. she could even like during that, that boardroom mm-hmm. scene, she could, I don't remember if there was any windows in the boardroom, but. There, for the there sake, is for the sake, for the sake of this scene, there are windows in the boardroom. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a big ass statue at the other end of the table, by the way, which is <laughs> like well, you an know, it, it, it was it from the, like it was from the bow of the oh, ship. That, okay, okay. That Barnabas came over on. Thank you. Yeah, uh, fucking huge. St- like, yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Takes Maybe up half like the first room. five seconds of the movie. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's I mean, it. But I mean, you know, she just as she's because she walks around the the conference table. Yes, just a pan of her walking around the conference table, and you see the activity. Over yeah. there, right, right. Just, just something simple, just to have have some some more meat to it. 
And I think that's all I'm saying with the Josette Victoria thing, by the way. Just just a, a hair of like Josette, even Josette just fading away. Just to where we see like, okay, so she's really not, instead she just she just disappears from the whole rest of the film. It seems strange. It's it For me, because Josette was the reason, Josette is the reason why Angelique is on this um, mm-hmm. crusade after Johnny Depp in the whole first place. Like sure. the, the right. whole reason um, Angelique is after Barnabas. And yet, she she plays a more than a supporting role character throughout the rest of the film, and it's like okay, I don't need her to have lines. The lines she has of just help me and follow him and all that kind of shit. That's fine, more than fine. Mm. But there's something to show us. Okay, she's satisfied now. She's satisfied. She's fading away, or what she was meaning to do with jo- with uh, Victoria and Barnabas has been accomplished. She's fading away. Something simple, but instead it's just sort of, I don't know. It just seems it feels left out there. I don't know why. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, with the with some of the trivia on this on this movie, do you guys notice that the original actors of Dark Shadows came in during the ball scene? Nope. Which I yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, I've so never the, seen the Yeah, it was I think it was one of the first guests that they showed, you know, Barnabas including the, it was like the With the two girls? It's yeah, the guy had, and the two girls. Yeah, the two girls. Yes, and I think I another did. guy in the back. Yes. Yeah, that was the original Barnabas. Ah, uh, okay. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah, okay. In the Dark Shadows. Um, I forgot to mention, by the way, talking about shitty parents, Johnny Lee Miller's character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Johnny Lee Miller's character really bugs me in this movie. Yeah. Um, and I mean this in a good way. He's such a shitty dad that I'm like, okay, I, I genuinely do not like him. Right. Um, the, the piece that feels weird, I guess, is that. So Barnabas interjects on the on behalf of the son, on the behalf of uh, David, mm-hmm. right, and gets rid of Johnny Lee Miller, and then doesn't fill the role. Yeah, yeah, I, I have. Yeah, that I, was weird. What I, I was I was going to say that as well because it's like two things, two yeah. things with that. I would think he would fill that role. Yes, but then also going off on a tangent. Yep. I want to see more secret passages in this house. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got yeah. that one, if you've got two different doors, <laughs> that that was hilarious to me. He's like, aha, I know this house like the back of my head. Presses the button, and there's macrame. macrame. Yeah, that's where I keep my macrame. I that was yeah. hilarious. The jokes, Kyle, I laughed every time. So, Everywhere I was supposed to laugh, the, I laughed. The point, the 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 part of, part of the movie that was hilarious. It was a montage of Barnabas trying to find a dark, quiet spot to sleep <laughs> during the day. Yes, was impossible. Yes. And it kind of reminded me of having a cat. You know, it, yeah. cats. You randomly see them in just different areas. That it's like, wait, you don't really sleep there. Maybe they're just trying to find a quiet spot. And then you know when in the uh, the wardrobe, mm-hmm. you know the old lady's opening up the she's, wardrobe, and, he, and he's just like, and she's "What oblivious. the hell are you doing?" Yeah, just yeah, uh, yeah. That that old woman is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I agree, but and I totally agree. Mm-hmm. And I with uh, David. with uh, David, the little kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With, with 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 Johnny Depp not stepping into that dad role, because how how cool would it be to be like, okay, yeah, you're my ward. Yeah, yeah. Right. Da, 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 well, and, I'm going to show you how to be a Collins. And I expected well, it. And then yeah. whenever the kid shows up to save him at the end, and he's like, well, my mom told me you'd be here. I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. But it also would make sense if he's like, hey, I know you drove my father out of here, but it was obviously for a good reason. You want to be like my dad. I appreciate that. Thanks for not being a douchebag. And I'm going to save you now from being chained up in this coffin. It, yeah. It's just so it's so. But you realize strange. that he never uh, says to um, – David Johnny Lee Miller Roger oh, yeah. Collins yeah that he never calls him Master Roger yes he always goes by David as Master David mm-hmm. as the man of the household mm-hmm. uh, so he he is that respect is there and he uh, it is mm-hmm. calling him Master pretty much of, of the household yeah no I get it yeah. I just and I, I I think during that part where the, when the dad left that's pretty much when all shit you know, all hell broke loose. Yeah. The, the, the thing, the, fighting the, the and, ball fell and all yeah. that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, I think, I don't know if there was enough time. Yeah. There, you know what? There might not have been in, in there to go. I don't know. I know he said, let's go play catch. No, but it, <laughs> no in the sun. Yeah. But I got blood transfusions, it's but fine. two extra minutes on the bed going, I know your father was gone now, but I will be looking after you at Collinwood or some shit, something that right. would have given us a semblance of like, okay, well he's going to fill that role. Instead, it appears that the, the, this kid's only parent is a ghost. That's really the only person. Because the Johnny Lee Miller, again, 
I'm not a big fan of most of the actors in this movie in terms of this movie for their acting. Johnny Lee Miller, though, pulled off Deadbeat Dad pretty well. <laughs> he's trying Deadbeat to nail, Dad. yeah, he's trying to nail yeah. the the coat clerk in the right. in the in the closet and all that stuff. And I'm well, like, and Jesus. I think he even that, disowned him to he even disowned David to her. He was like, I don't yeah. know who that kid is. Like, what an asshole. I'm oh, like, I know. man, you're a dick. Well, and Barnabas and, and Master David's relationship has always been very close mm-hmm. uh, ever since the very first time that they met yeah you know he looks down and he's like you know what's your name is david and he's like oh master david you know pleasure to meet you, you know? yeah and everybody looks at him as being a freaking weirdo yeah but yet barnabas is like oh you're a collins you're you're one of us you know you're the master of the, you're the head of the household type thing yeah you know so which as a friend is great but yeah. the kid's gonna need a father true that's a, that's i don't know that's the it just it just after everything else in the movie that bothered me Hardly at all, but it did bother me. And again, it's implied. It's mm-hmm. implied that he's going to step into that. We just never see it on screen. And they seemed, I, I don't know. You were bringing up Victoria just, or maybe it was you, Kyle, bringing up Victoria just appears. That shit happens way too much. Like to the point where I was like, is she a fucking ghost? Like, this is, is are they maybe <laughs> all seeing a ghost? Because, like, that would have been kind of interesting if she had actually died in the insane asylum and was here as a ghost and was somehow, that would have been interesting as a, as a twist. But yeah. I don't know. It just seems strange how she seemed to pop up. She, she was like this weird mm-hmm. add-on because if you think yeah. about the family you've got i mean even hoffman seems to be a part of the family david obviously chloe moretz uh what's her name carolyn mm-hmm. the mom michelle pfeiffer and then uh johnny lee douchebag miller yeah. so you've got that that you know uh quartet qua- yeah. uh, cinquet yeah whatever. five yeah, five, five of them <laughs> there you go and then you have victoria who just seems to flit in and out and we never see her being a governess for david She's supposedly his governess, his nanny. Nanny. Yeah. Never see it. I shit. I don't even think I've ever seen them talk more than the first time at the table. Yeah, that's, that's true. Very true. Yeah. yeah. That's that's fucking weird. Didn't even think about that. That's yeah. very strange. You, well, <laughs> the movie was almost two hours long. Yeah, they had time. Yeah. But they the had thing, time the, for the things. The thing is, is you. I mean, I don't know. the The whole plot was Barnabas coming back yes. and Angelique freaking out that he's back. Yes. And now she's trying to. It's all about those two. No. The other stuff is fluff. You're right. To the point. Again, to the point that those two should have hooked up at the end. It should have just been Angelique and Johnny Depp. And Johnny Depp goes, I can't believe you locked me in here for 200 years. I fucking hate you. And he did her go, yes, but you love to hate me. Yes, I do. And then they screw supernatural <laughs> style. Sex. Yeah, hate sex style to the end of which the movie. Did which they lead, did do. <laughs> yeah, which it did lead to a lot of hotel rooms being wrecked, by the way, after this of movie. Of course, yeah. Uh, yeah. So right, speaking so, of uh, yeah. hotel rooms, right? Yeah. How much do they have to pay to fix hotel rooms now? <laughs> no, no, no. I was thinking, well, speaking of pay, like, what do you think the the budget was for this movie? So oh, this is 2012. God, something so. horrible. $50 million. Uh, nice. I'm, I'm is that your guess? guess? Yes. 50? Okay. 50? I'm going to... It's fucking Johnny Depp, Helena Bonham Carter, and know. Tim Burton. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to go 22. 22 million? Yeah. CGI okay. alone. CGI See, alone was 4 million. Go ahead. See, to me, all the, um, all the, all the, the well-known actors, you know, they, they have a set contract rate. Yeah. Um... And so, you gotta think of too the you know Collinsworth or Collins yeah Collinsworth yeah so that was Collins, yeah. Collins yeah, yeah. Port they had to build that whole they had thing. the whole build the whole town yeah I'm they, saying fifty million yeah. yeah okay I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with a hundred million okay John's the closest one hundred and fifty million dollars yeah. estimated they wow. had the money man this movie should have yeah. been a fucking blockbuster say, it's probably all the makeup they had to use on yeah. Alice Cooper I'm gonna, to I'm make gonna, it look young I'm gonna set the stage for you ready <laughs> uh, it was just makeup dude I know. here you go <laughs> directed by Tim Burton. Okay. Right, starring yeah, right. Johnny Depp, starring Michelle Pfeiffer, starring Helena Bonham Carter, starring Eva Green, starring ja- Jackie Earl H- Haley, by the way, wasted. That was... As Willie? Yeah. his He, he is such a good actor. <laughs> yeah. And then to have him be this... Yeah, he was in Bad goof, News Bears. I mean... The, the goofy uh, dude. Yeah. It, yeah. W- yeah. What a waste. But starring all those people, and then you go, wah, 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 uh, <laughs> dark shadows. Here it is. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's just, it's just a... Greeting. Off. Greetings, drunkard. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> so okay. how much did it make? So, yeah. open, uh, I laugh well, more. Wait, what did you, you say? One hundred fifty million. Yeah, one hundred fifty million. One hundred fifty million budget. budget. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I have two figures. Sure. One for the opening weekend and one Total. cumulative worldwide gross. Open, opening. So opening weekend, weekend I'll ahead. say. I'll say fifty million. Okay. Opening weekend. Yeah. I'm gonna. It's go pretty high. Seven million. Okay. Thirty million. 
30 billion? Million. Million. Oh, million. Not okay. billion. 30 billion dollars. Dear God, Titanic um, hasn't even One billion what did, what did you say, Justin? I said 50 million. 50? All right. So John is the closest with 29 million uh, 685,000. So I've, overs- I've, I've undershot on every Yes. <laughs> as you typically do with, with my movies. But no, that's, that's what it is. Um, <laughs> so cumulative worldwide gross. I'll stick with 50 million. 50 million. <laughs> worldwide? Worldwide gross. I, I'm going to go 75 with that one. Okay. No, I'm gonna say this made its money back, and it it was it cost 150 million to make. Yeah. Yes, 200 million. Yeah, uh, yeah. John's closer. It's, it's uh, 245 million dollars. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it was a success in terms of the studio. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that changes nothing. For it was me. picked by Kyle, so you know, fuck him. That's what it is. <laughs> I actually go into every movie going, wait, who picked this? Oh yeah, Kyle did. So. Not me. Are we are we guessing uh, are we guessing critic scores yeah. and all that now? Yeah. So okay. I got Rotten Tomatoes up here. So let's go with the critic score first. Go ahead, Kyle. You can go first. Uh, critic score. I would say probably forty five percent. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, you got to think critics, dude. Uh, you're right. I'm just surprised. I, I would have thought, you know, it being your movie, I would have okay. thought you would have scored higher. But. Yeah, I'm here my, to win it, dude. My initial. One was forty six, but I won't do oh. that to you. <laughs> One dollar, Bob. <laughs> yeah, hey, I know hey, it could, it could uh, bite you in the ass. I wasn't though. gonna do. Well, I could do forty seven too, and it'd be fine. Well, you could um, do forty three. It goes both ways. Hey, that's right. I could. Um, I'm gonna do uh, fifty five. Okay, I'm going thirty. Thirty six. Dang. Yeah, Eddie saw the, before. Was a critic score. <laughs> no, I just. I have a low opinion of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so Which we I. have heard. So do a lot of critics. Yeah. I thought you loved it. I was confused. Yeah, Man, right. you know, if I saw like a, oh, I had a new movie come out and I'm like, yeah, I'm really proud of it. And I see that the, the critics uh, section in the newspaper and I see Eddie Verrill, I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> okay, nope. Don't assume. Don't assume. I, I, you have two ways. I can either go completely deep in terms of like a literary level and, and completely break apart your movie and then still give you a point seven, or <laughs> or I could just say, no, this is... I would hope this, this score is a little bit higher. It was a fun romp than in the, the mindless range. range. So what about the audience then? Uh, so the audience, I'm going to probably go a little higher. Um, not much, though. It's probably about 55%. Okay, respectable. 40. I'm going to go in the middle, 45. 46. Wow. Oh, 46. Nice. So it, I mean, I know I how much they're spending on it. should have said 46 for this one. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, I know how much they're spending on it, but I got an idea about there you go. who might vote on it. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, um, let's figure out what we're going to vote on it then. So um, I guess, Kyle, since it was your movie, you get to have the honor of going first. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I went ahead and... Uh, yeah, it after the movie, it, uh, I immediately had a score. It's seven point seven. Seven point seven. All right for Kyle. I got to go high just to even out the average. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I, I can't say you didn't lower my score. Then go ahead. <laughs> yes, yeah, true. Um, all right, so then John. So um, as you know, I, I always look at Roger Ebert's uh, reviews. <laughs> he he, did, he didn't really say anything to. Uh, too bad or good about the film. He just kind of gave it a little uh, synopsis mm-hmm. and uh, rated it uh, two and a half stars. Okay. Out, out of what? Out of five. Out of five, okay. Yeah. Um, so 50, 50%. And um, I'll give you my, my thoughts on it, too. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, Kyle, you might not like it. No, that's okay. Um, I'm used to it now. The, it, and it's, it's not you, it's me. Um, the beginning That doesn't of, work for me, by the way. No, when, when I no. do that, it doesn't fucking work on <laughs> it. No. Uh, the beginning of the movie made it made it seem like uh, it would just keep getting better, but to me, it really never did. Mm. It kind of it kind of got a little worse, got a little better, got a little worse, got a little better, but it never realized its full potential. Um, I kept really kept waiting for it to get going. Like mm. I was I had this feeling like any minute now, the movie would finally take off, and it just never it never got there for me. Um, it did have some really funny moments, and, and I I, I, la- I did laugh. I, I'm not kidding. Every time I was supposed to laugh, I laughed. Um, and Alice Cooper's makeup, Alice Cooper's makeup was was awesome. Um, and the movie really didn't have a, as I said, a, 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 a classic Tim Burton feel, feel for me. It kind of felt like Caps uh, Casper meets Sweeney Todd. Oh, kind of. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. A, that is right. a good app description. Yeah. yeah, I called it Willy Wonka becomes a vampire. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> So, but um, I, I think oh, my man. score is going to be higher than Eddie. 
So, so don't gonna, guess. Go I'm ahead. Gonna, I want to hear it. I, I'm going to give it a uh, solid four. So okay. Four. Oof. Okay. Wow. Then Daddy. Okay, so it's interesting to me that you said that you were waiting for it to get better and it just never did. That's almost exactly how I felt about it back when I watched it the first time in 2012. Like I remember sitting in the theater and going, "This isn't bad. This could be. This could be really good." And then by the time we hit the hippie scene, I was like, "I'm done." Like this just it just didn't go anywhere. It felt like it was just sort of like, "Well, I'm here, and okay, it's gonna be a fish out of water movie, and you know, he's gonna he's gonna do some funny things, and then but they're not really gonna be that funny. We've seen them in other movies, but we haven't seen him with a vampire who's played by Johnny Depp. I just I don't know. The other problem I have is it's Johnny Depp. I'm done seeing him in movies. He's, he's the same person. This movie could have been called Chocolat with a vampire, and it's the same fucking movie. It just bothers me that it's constantly Johnny Depp. I'm done with Johnny Depp. This has nothing to do with Kyle so I'll picking make sure, the movie. So I'll make sure no other movies have Johnny Depp. No it, other it, movies have t- problems with time. No other movies have yep, black science. and white movies. No, no problem. Uh, That's not true. I love black and white movies. Just not, debatable. not some of the ones. Uh, and then you have clear science. The science has to be within the movie. The science has to make sense. Which it kind of did. It didn't, but it's okay. Transfusions, but that's fine. Like I said, I'm willing to accept that for this movie. Sure. I'm willing to accept maybe I missed missed did the transfusions. Um, I'm going to give this movie a a 3-2 because of the transfusions. I'm going to give that. So would that bring you from a 3 to a 3-2? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I was at a 3 whenever we started this conversation. About 10 minutes into this conversation, I was like, eh, it's going to be a 3. But then the transfusions thing, I'm willing to give it a 3-2. I'm willing to accept I may have missed something with that, but there's too many other plot holes in it. And I don't like, I don't like how, like you're saying, like and Kyle, you're saying insinuations Im- implications. Yeah. They seem to be implying that this took place and that took place and that took place, but you never fucking see it. I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to do a whole movie with a black screen, but I'm implying that all these other things took place. Well, it's, it just goes with any other aspect of a movie. Yeah. You know, okay, so you've got a a gun that's shooting bullets or something like that. Are you going to assume that it's a certain type of caliber? Are you going to say, well, they didn't tell me what it was and it has amazing stopping power? Or they didn't uh, didn't show me the whole transporting scene of him going from London to New York, so did he actually get there by plane or did he get there by boat? You know, you're worried about finer details. I'm not worried about those. These were character things that that should have been there that that weren't. Well, it just it just seemed it just seemed like that's what you're looking for is is movies to purposely tell you this is what I'm doing. When it matters instead of instead of just going, oh, okay, well that's that's what they're doing. Only when it matters. Okay. Yeah. Justin? Oh, it's my turn now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh I finished. <laughs> three two. <laughs> three point two. Okay. Um so I didn't really enjoy the movie. Um I felt like like you were saying that there were some scenes that were just kind of drawn out and stuff. And the one in particular I was thinking was the hippie scene. And I think Probably because of the whole romance, they like I zone out and that kind of stuff. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's probably the reason so why. So anybody for that. with a romance category, yeah, yeah and I know it's going to be me. Bet, bet on <laughs> Justin be, not liking no, it. It's, it's going to be Chocolat with Johnny Depp, <laughs> <laughs> um, the vampire guy. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, I, I didn't really speak much in this episode either because honestly, it was just kind of like, yeah, I, I don't know. It it, it, it felt like a chore. To be honest, so but um, so I'm I'm actually though I'm gonna give it a three point five though. Okay. Just because I did like some of the cinematography in it, um, I liked. Uh, I always liked Tim Burton stuff too, but I typically this do. one just like, kind of. We, we just watched blo- um, blo- um, fuck not Blockbuster. We just watched Beetlejuice last night with the kids, mm. and I I mean and I watch it. I'm like this is it still feels fresh. It still feels like. You know, Michael Keaton's performance is fucking amazing as yeah. Beetlejuice. Like, yeah, it yeah. just feels great. That's a classic. Yeah. yeah. But I watched that, what, three hours after I finished watching Dark Shadows for, like, the third time. And I'm like, it's it, it's like it's like Tim Burton is working in reverse. Like, you would think, typically, he would get, he would get better and better. And it's like, no, no, some of his films are just falling more and more flat. Where, you know, Beetlejuice was amazing. Nightmare Before Christmas was great. And mm-hmm. then you have all these, like, flops. You know, I don't know. It's just, it's really strange. Apparently... Uh, there was some Nightmare Before Christmas nods in this movie too. Oh, were there? Yeah, like some hidden things in the movie. Like I, I, I don't remember any specifics. I'd have to go back and look huh. it up. But Interesting. I didn't see. Any. Yeah. So anyway, so that leaves us at a four point six. Four point six. All right. Yep. Had Kyle, ra- I had to raise that average. I was about to say Kyle over there. Dro- <laughs> I got to play the system a little while. Wow. All my movies are going to be tens from now on, just to play the average, so to speak. No, yep. you know, you can do that. You could do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to. And everybody but, yeah. will just look at you, and be like, "No, nah, he's just trying to mess with the averages." <laughs> Jesus. So anyway, John, 
Since Kyle is now out of the running for this week, we have to pick somebody who's going to be the next picker. The next picker? The pick, next pick picker. the picker. Pick the picker. Okay, here we go. John. It's going to be B. Yeah, John. I thought it was. <laughs> I actually called that earlier, too. Did yeah. you? Yeah, I said it's going to be John today. Yep. All right. Let's what does see. John get? Sci-fi. I hope so, just to piss you off. Yep, that's right. You're going to leave me with fucking romance. Right. Hey, which I have a really good romance. Oh, okay. Movie. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm, I'm just going to pick a sci-fi for romance. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. it'll, be a, it'll, be a, it'll be a sci-fi romance thriller yep. comedy drama. With good, okay. with good science. Yeah. All right. Let's see, uh, let's see what I'm going to subject you guys to. All right. And it's going to be animation. Animation, all right. All okay. right, animation, let's see. Another genre that I'm not too big on. There's a couple of good ones. I'm with you on this. Okay, my selection is going to be 2014's Big Hero 6. All right. Yeah, so if you're wanting to check out the movie, um, you can go to uh, realgood.com. That is R-E-E-L, as in a film reel. And uh, it'll tell you everywhere that you can find it and stream it. and Disney watch Plus movie. and Stars is where it shows. Yeah. Do so you want you a synopsis? Yeah, sure. Go for it. Um, the synopsis of Big Hero 6 is the special bond, a, a special bond develops between plus-sized inflatable robot Baymax and prodigy Hero Hamada. They team up with a group of friends to form a band of high-tech heroes. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right. Well, then that's our show. Um, be ready to cry. Oh, really? Be ready. Is for it tears. sad? Be just be ready for a tear or two. It has it has ups. It has downs. It tear. has. It's a roller coaster ride of it, emotions. It is. Okay. It's a typical Disney. You know, you got your funny, and then you're then you're crying, and you look weird laughing while you're crying, and yeah, it's one of those. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Well, check out that movie, and then hit us back up next week so we can watch Big Hero 6 and talk about it, and uh, like and subscribe and rate and do all that stuff. All right. Bye. See you guys. See ya. <laughs> See ya.